Hello again, everyone. It's great seeing you again. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and thanks for joining us for Friday's edition of Alaska, of Alaska Weather. Up first here on the uh, hazardous weather graphic, we've got uh, the yellow area signifying wind chill advisories that uh, remain out uh, through tonight and into tomorrow here for the Alaska Range and into the uh, northern, uh, well, not outside of the Cusquam Valley there over toward the uh, Alaska Range for the Cuscombe Valley, but uh, up into the central interior, the greater Tanana area, as well as uh, Bells there in the Koyukuk Valley. And that's for uh, wind chills anywhere from 35 to 50 degrees below zero. Uh, and that's out again through tonight and into tomorrow. Out here to the west, this is uh, a winter storm warning that kicks into effect at 6 p.m tomorrow evening for the south coast of the Seward Peninsula, including Nome and areas to the east, and then a winter weather advisory for the uh, Bering Strait coast and also for St. Lawrence Island that, again, those also kick into effect uh, at 6 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Actually, probably sooner here for St. Lawrence Island, uh, probably be going much of the day tomorrow. And uh, also Northeast Prince William Sound, uh, particularly mainly around Thompson Pass, wind chill advisory there for uh, wind chills 50 degrees below zero with uh, winds gusting 40 to possibly as high as 50 miles an hour. And uh, that's in effect until, let's see, 10 a.m. Sunday morning. So uh, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into Sunday morning for that advisory there. And then high wind warning remains out there for the uh, Juneau Borough and Northern Admiralty Island. And that remains out until 9 p.m. this evening. Let me back it up there. It's out until 9 p.m. this evening for those areas for north winds, north to northeast, gusting 30 to, or sustained 30 with gusts 60 miles an hour in those areas. And the uh, winter storm warnings have, uh, whoop, let me back it up one more time here. Where, or the heavy snow warnings have ended for the southern areas, and but remain out until 9 p.m. this evening over toward Misty Fjords and Hyder, looking for maybe another one to three inches of snow, tapering off down there now. In fact, some areas starting to change to rain, like Metwell, Catlin, and Ketchikan. Uh, seeing a little bit of rain mixing in with the snow there. So end, it's ended in those areas, but it'll continue until 9 p.m. this evening, again for Misty Fjords and Hyder, and then taper off and uh, end probably after midnight. Satellite imagery now showing the uh, system mostly going by to the south or it did go by to the south but that man uh, bringing an area of snow up into the southern panhandle and that tapers off as you, as you head north here to mainly just uh, clouds over the northern areas there with the uh, cold outflow winds going on in Lynn Canal and uh, the northern interior waters. Rather gusty also here for the uh, North Gulf Coast uh, but not uh, really blasting out like it uh, could. Uh, during a cold outbreak, but uh, winds gusting to about uh, 45 miles an hour in the Valdez area, and for example, and uh, here's the system coming onto the southwest coast, uh, weakening as it does, spreading clouds into Kodiak, and much milder conditions. Temperatures are popping up into the mid 40s over the Alaska Peninsula this afternoon. Of course, rain going on in those areas, and so change the rain over the Pribilof Islands. They gain in the backside where that warmer southwesterly wind flow. But uh, along the coast, uh, near, or near whiteout conditions, winds gusting anywhere from, uh, well, as high as 56 miles an hour, Cape Ramon's up this afternoon out of the east-southeast. Uh, Macquarie seeing gusts 45 miles an hour, as well as Cape Newingham, uh, seeing those gusty winds. And again, the snow creating very low visibilities there. And winds now kicking up to about 45 miles an hour at Gamble. Visibility is still 10 miles, the precipitation back to your south yet, so it hasn't started snowing there. Wind's coming up about 40 miles an hour this afternoon, or 40 to 45, or gust to 45 at Unalakleet, and even up uh, into the uh, Kotzebue Sound area up here 
Uh, winds Baldwin Peninsula is seeing gusts up to about 30, 35 miles an hour, so wind's already coming up. And then just showers back out to the west here. As you can see, this area lifting northward, this one pushing eastward and kind of falling apart right through here, beginning to. And more cold air coming out of the Russian Far East, so snow fall levels back down to near surface out towards Shimmy, a temperature just above freezing. Winds gusting west-southwest up to about 50 miles an hour. Otherwise, uh, interior, no change, clear and cold. Afternoon temperatures anywhere from 35 to 45 degrees below zero um, in these areas like the Yukon Flats, uh, maybe the North Slope, and down into the Northway Toke area. Toke was at least uh, 54 degrees below zero, I believe, this morning, and places like Gulf Canada down to 45 degrees below zero. Uh, another cold wind, the Susitna Valley as well this morning, uh, temperatures in the 30 to 40 degree below zero range once again in the Susitna Valley with uh, Willow, uh, one of the Willow locations bottoming out about 34 below zero if I remember correctly. On the chart, uh, that all due to the Arctic High here sitting right along the border in the uh, Yukon and the eastern interior, but really dominating the weather all the way into the Gulf of Alaska and back out to the west and this uh, system trying to push into that and resulting in snow, blowing snow and uh, Really blizzard conditions, Cape Newenham or to uh, Macoriak, and along the Yukon Delta coast, southern Yukon Delta coast. We can see tight gradient in those winds uh, already up, as I mentioned, from the Yukon Delta out to St. Lawrence Island, even becoming quite windy farther to the north there, across Seward Peninsula and into uh, the Baldwin Peninsula area. Otherwise, just some patchy areas of fog. I noted at uh, Kaktovik today, and a few areas in the cop or the upper Yukon Valley as well as back toward the uh, north central interior along the Yukon River, but nothing really widespread or too serious. And rainfall amounts about uh, four tenths of an inch, water equivalent falling in the Pribilofs today, maybe up to a half an inch along the Alaska Peninsula. Quite a sharp contrast here in temperatures. Snow in advance of the front changes to rain almost immediately behind it. And then kind of a mixture of rain and snow showers, Adak and Atka, and uh, snow showers with the stronger winds back toward Chimia. And for tonight, it'll stay quite windy out there with snow showers or just uh, periods of snow as this low lifts northward and holds on to about 950 millibars. Front is coming northward as well, pushing eastward continues to weaken. Precipitation is going to start lightening up through this area with uh, periods of snow, but lighter winds now for the southwest coast, but still quite windy St. Lawrence Island, uh, snow blowing snow, still clear and cold central eastern interior. And well below zero again, south central Alaska, and again anywhere from 30 to 50 below, or 30 to 55 below, anywhere over the eastern interior. Strong winds, northern panhandle, snow tapering off down to the south for Saturday. Tomorrow, this system brings a chance of snow to Prince of Wales Island south side there, otherwise still cold and windy, right up into the Arctic coast. This uh, front, areas of light snow, continues to weaken, even up over the northern Bering Sea. Still could see some blowing snow, though. New system develops, brings moisture into the eastern Aleutians, and for the outlook on Sunday, still moisture pushing in. So warmer temperatures, clouds, chance of snow, south central Alaska, a little bit better chance up to the northwest here with, in, toward the uh, low center that's crossing the Russian Far East. Snow showers over the Bering Sea. Well, it's tonight uh, in the minus 40s again, east side, warmer to the west, and let's bounce to Sunday morning. Still cold in the east and a little milder in the west. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic, uh, Saturday morning, band IFR with the system coming in that southwest flow into the southwest coast, Bristol Bay. So we got IFR spreading over Kodiak Island late tonight. And uh, ways inland here across the uh, yukon Kuskokwim River Delta areas, and then back up across St. Lawrence Island. And marginal VFR to the Pribilofs, and then following in behind uh, some pretty good areas of VFR, Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, and a little further out to the west. Otherwise, remainder of the interior and the Panhandle VFR. For tomorrow afternoon, this starts to break up as it uh, continues to push inland. And the IFR now just, uh, say from the Lado Hills, across the southern Seward Peninsula into the Bering Strait, marginal for St. Lawrence Island. IFR, Yukon Delta Coast, with some I or VFR here for the Kuskokwim uh, Bay and uh, Delta there. And then back into some marginal stuff over the Southwest Mountains. And then IFR for the Pribilofs, and mostly off the coast and north of the eastern Aleutians. Not too bad out west, and still VFR over the interior and the Panhandle. 
and North Gulf Coast stays VFR at least into Sunday morning, as well as the southeast coast and the central eastern interior. IFR with another batch of moisture coming in, uh, trying to push into the uh, inland areas here, but uh, kind of hanging up. And IFR along the coast up into the Bering Strait and then breaking out right behind it to pretty good VFR, Pribilofs, Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, and Central Aleutians with just some areas of marginal out farther to the west. And then for the afternoon, not much change out here. VFR, some areas of marginal VFR, especially over the uh, southwest bearing, Western Aleutians. IFR now advancing farther to the east and north. You can see a couple of surges here going northward, just grazing the western Beaufort Sea coast. And uh, along the northwest coast, Kotzebue, Kivalina, up to Point Hope, IFR, south coast of the Seward Peninsula, in now across the uh, mid Yukon River Valley, Cuscoma Valley, down into western Cook Inlet and south side of the Kenai Peninsula. For passes, Anatuvik, VFR, same forecast for Attigan, good VFR tomorrow. Lake Clark and Merrill also continued VFR flying conditions with rainy VFR. Same forecast for Windy, staying uh, wide open. And Isabel also, Celine's visibility is unlimited for both Isabel and Mentasta. And Tanita, another great day coming up for the day Saturday. And Portage, good VFR there. Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels uh, right, across, right across Kodiak Island here and uh, the Aleutian Range, just south here of, uh, oh, well, very close to Cape Nuenam and then back north of St. Matthew Island out here to the west, uh, and then angling on down toward the Queen Charlotte's, and 2,000 feet nudging its way northward here into the Fox Islands, otherwise uh, south of the remainder of the state. Icing, with moisture coming in here, kind of starts splitting up. We've got uh, just uh, a weak batch coming in across the Seward Peninsula and Bering Strait Coast uh, for tomorrow afternoon. A little bit more extensive area here with possible areas of considerable moderate rime icing. Uh, here over the eastern Bering Sea and then down across the uh, eastern Aleutians, western Alaska Peninsula, icing free in the interior. And this, at least through tomorrow, staying to the south of the Panhandle jet stream, showing that flow will keep that moisture to the south, probably carried on into the southeast there. And high pressure ridging right over the interior. Northerly flow hanging tough here over the eastern interior in Prince William Sound, about 50 knots. Here's a southwest flow, pretty strong, 160 knots. That's going to eventually shove this ridge eastward and uh, begin to break it down. We'll get into more of a southwest flow here late in the weekend and first of next week. Something of a change. And then for 9,000 feet, south to north flow here. Pretty good ahead of this uh, system uh, back to the west, 40 to 55 knots. And 50 knots for the eastern Aleutians. Lighter under the ridge axis, more variable. And north to northeast, uh, 2025 for the uh, panhandle. 3,000 foot winds, much lighter, 10 to 20 knots, northern panhandle there, and 5 to 15 over the central eastern interior. Subtly, 30 to 40 knots turned westerly over the Aleutians here on the south side of that system, up to 30 knots. And taking a look at turbulence, occasional moderate chop, pretty likely here. Uh, Alaska Peninsula, and uh, up here over the northwest, Seward Peninsula, northwest coast, into the Kobuk Valley, St. Lawrence Island, and the northern panhandle as well, looking a little bumpy tomorrow, mostly mechanical turbulence here with the uh, outflow through the gaps of the mountain passes and that extends into eastern Prince William Sound. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on earth, growing up to seven feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse. We're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline. The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. 
but threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females, predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs. A deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the and the eggs don't hatch. So another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least, before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. For over 40 years, NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sakhalin was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. 
Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. We're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there, and that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, two whales from the western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and they'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to Alaska weather. Let's take a look with the, at the marine forecast, starting with the sea ice conditions analyzed this morning. We see pack ice showing up near St. Matthew Island. That extends down to Bristol Bay. Also in the Cook Inlet, we also had pretty extensive ice, especially in the central and northern part of that area. For the southeast forecast on Saturday, we're going to be looking at strong northerly winds, gust of 55, with storm, storm warnings out for that area on Saturday. And then uh, northeasterly winds, 20 to 25, across the rest of the inside waters. Out on the outside coast, Gulf Coast region, we're going to be looking at northeasterly winds, 20 to 25 knots. On Sunday, we're going to be looking continued strong northern winds, especially the northern inside waters, 25 to 45 in the central and northern inside waters, southeasterly at 15 otherwise, and outside waters along the Gulf Coast, we're going to look at easterly winds, 20 knots. For south central, again, uh, along the Gulf Coast, looking at 20 knots with some winds coming out of the Copper River Delta, also in Prince William Sound, normally at 15. Otherwise, across Cook Inlet, we're going to be looking at 20 to 25 knots. And for Sunday, looking at, again, winds out of the north in Prince William Sound at 10 knots. Otherwise, generally from the east at 20 to 25 across the Gulf. Cook Inlet, again, 15 to 25 knots. Otherwise, seas around 7 feet as you get near the Barren Islands. And for Saturday's forecast, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, generally northerly winds across much of the area around Kodiak Island, 25 knots. As you get closer to the Alaska Peninsula, we're looking at 30 knots from the south as the front approaches that region. And Bristol Bay also southerly winds at 20 knots. And for much of the um, Rest of the area on, on Sunday, we're looking at Kodiak Island, 20, the area around Kodiak Island, 20 to 35 knots with seas around 10 feet. Otherwise, behind that front, we're going to be looking at winds generally from the west at 25 knots. Saturday's marine forecast for Lucian Chain. Again, we're going to be looking at winds generally from the west. 35 knots out across the western part of that Aleutian chain, and then uh, generally southerly winds 
around 30 knots with seas around 19 feet. And then on Sunday's forecast, we're going to make southerly winds with seas generally between 20, 20 and 25 knots. For the west coast, we're going to be looking at generally southerly winds, 30 knots, maybe a little bit stronger next to the ice edge there, 30 knots, but otherwise southerly winds. On Sunday's forecast, looking at uh, close to southwesterly winds, close to 40 knots there near St. Matthew Island with seas 25 feet, otherwise along the pack ice, 20 to 35 knots, and then Norton Sound around 25 knots from the southeast. And Saturday's forecast for the Arctic coast, Beaufort Sea, we're looking at winds from the east at 20 knots, otherwise easterly winds across much of the region and into the Bering Strait, 30 to 40 knots. And on Sunday, again, we're going to be looking at southerly winds across much of the Bering Strait, 35 to 40 knots, and across the Beaufort Sea, generally from the east at 20 to 25 knots. Tonight's weather, we're going to be looking at a strong frontal system moving through the Bering Sea and bringing uh, scattered snow showers across much of that area. There's also a weak front frontal system moving into the Gulf of Alaska. High pressure remains through much of the mainland. Ice fog as well. That system stays with us um, for another day or so. And looking at Saturday's forecast, look, we're going to be continuing with that system that wraps up in the Bering. Several low pressure systems moving into the Alaska Peninsula and into and in near southeast Alaska. And for Sunday, looking system to slowly weaken in the Bering Sea and a frontal system down along the Gulf Coast. This has been Eric Holloway with the National Weather Service. Thanks for joining. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.